Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercress, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. As you can see, this is a BBC Micro game. And, all I need to do now is just load it up. This is Mini Adventure, from 1984, from the book How to Write Adventure Games by Peter Kilworth, published by Penguin Acorn Computer Library. So this is a text adventure that you had to write the code for from a book on your own, and then once you got it all done with no errors, this was what you got. So, we are in a crumbling room full of cobwebs. A passage leads west, a barred door bars a north exit. You can see a shield. Well, let's go ahead and take a shield. Of course, when we do that, we suddenly hear water trying to rush into the room. Let's see if we can go west. The sounds are slightly nearer. You are in a cheerful pink room. The word blah is inscribed on the ceiling. A passage leads east, and a doorway full of whirling lives leads north. You can see nothing. Well, we have the shield. I guess it can just go north, and we're dead. The knives stab at you as you pass. You're not actually wearing the shield, so the knives get you. You have the part of this world, alas. Would you like another game? Well, yes, I've only been playing for two minutes. You're in a crumbling room full of cobwebs. A passage leads west. A barred door barred the north exit. You can see a shield. We could go west. But we have to take the shield, so we have to go back east. Get shield. The water sounds are quite loud. Wow. Let's go west. The water is getting nearer. You're in a cheerful pink room. Okay. Wear shield. Okay. Water is soaking up through the floor. Let's go north. The knives stab at you as you pass. They bounce off your shield with shatters. Pools of water are on the ground. You're to the north of the pink room in an alcove. The only exit seems to be back the way you came. And, well, let's, we, we can see a black rod. Let's get the rod. And let's go south. We're dead. Let's try this again. Get shield. There are faint sounds of water. Let's go west again. Let's wear the shield. Water sounds are quite loud. So even the water starts running before you get the shield. I was not aware of this. I did not know that was a thing in this game. I just always grabbed the shield first thing I did. So last time when I didn't, turns out the water started rushing out. I wonder how you ended up in this area to begin with. The game never says. I guess you're just supposed to use your imagination. Anyway, let's go north. Let's get the rod. And let's wave the rod. Nothing happens. Pools of water on the ground. Well, we don't have much time. And I think the only hint of anything that we're supposed to do was the word blah in the ceiling in the pink room. Let's say blah. There is a fanfare of cream horns, and you are thrown through the air. The water is ankle deep. You are in a crumbling room full of cobwebs. A passage leads west. A barred door bars a north exit. You can see nothing. From here, if we just go back to whence we came, we're going to die, and we're also going to waste time, too. So let's wave the rod. And the door vanishes quietly. The water is knee-deep. The barred door was to the north. Let's see what happens if we go north from here. The water is waist deep. You're in a vast treasure chamber with an exit south. You can see a jeweled crown. Let's get the crown. The 
crown is yours. Well done. Start game. Mistake. We just kick ba get kicked back to the OS prompt. It is possible to die if the water raises past your head. You only have like 8, 9, maybe 10 turns before the game kills you outright. The, the water will eventually reach past your head reach up to your head and then past your head if you waste any more time. So you only have enough time give or take a few turns to beat the game which is very very short. Matter of fact this was a very very short game made by people who made by somebody who wanted to write an adventure game for people who wanted to learn how to write their own adventure games. That's pretty much all it is. That's pretty much all that mini adventure is. And I can kind of give a mini review because, well, that's pretty much all I can do. It's just a short game. There's no graphics. There's no sound. There's no errors in this. I mean, there better not be errors in this. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. And not much a reason to play it again unless you want to see if you can beat it. That's basically it. Not really much else I can say about this game. I mean, thankfully, you can find it. You can find the game easily, thankfully. And it's all right for what it is. I guess. So, that's pretty much all I have to say about this game. It's a very short game, very small map. You only have a limited amount of turns to do it in. That's kind of the charm right there. I'm actually happy that that's a thing. I mean, you could have been given all the time in the world, but no. You have water for flush, flushing into the rooms and the in chamber where you are. The chamber that the game gives no effort into explaining how you got there because, well, it's a simple, easy game for the BBC Micro. And that added challenge that comes from water rushing into the room makes it a little more memorable, makes the game a little more memorable, adds a little bit of challenge. I do like that. I do like that it is the interesting thing in an otherwise very, very short game. So that is it for Let's Play Mini Adventure for the BBC Micro. Special thanks to High Retro Game Lord for playing this game as one in a huge multitude of BBC Micro games that they played for the past uh, two and a half years, give or take. I will leave a link to their video and their channel in the description to this video. Until then, this is Prince Watercrest. Take care. Stay safe. Thanks for watching and see you guys later.